Hey, Brother Hogan here. Is this a good time? It's always a good time. Hey, I got your package, UPS store. These are exactly the letters the, from Curtis, Guy Curtis, etc. Post them. Let the world know. I tried. Okay, very good. I, I wanted to get that confirmation from you before we uh, posted them, and we will absolutely uh, post those letters. Very good. Post all that stuff, brother. I got nothing to hide. I'm in favor of full disclosure. Okay. Yeah, there's a simple solution. Abolish the IRS, throw it all away, let people work and earn their money and not have to waste all this time on this stuff. Now, <laughs> there's Amen. A, I don't, there a flat tax or something like that like other countries do. This is stupid. You have to hand them the club to beat you with. <laughs> yeah. What? I, have we gone crazy? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I am not a tax rebel. I understand why people are. And I, gee whiz, who's that one guy drove a... Drove <laughs> And now we've wasted 99 and a half months of my life sitting here in a jumpsuit. This is enough. Yeah, amen. What? Okay, and pay back the damages, please, by the way. Amen, amen. So, I think every, not only Americans, everybody in the world ought to know, it's a, it's a Philippians chapter 1 thing. Paul said, my bonds have fallen out rather to the furtherance of the gospel. What the government did to me is not only throw me in jail, they ruined my reputation. Yeah which is worth more to me than anything. I have tried for all of my life to be honest and fair and open and above board, and I would like a complete and full investigation of everybody involved. Amen. Everybody. Call them in and say, and it's going to have to be Congress. Our federal court system will not do it. They do not judge themselves, okay? Yeah. This is going to have to go before Congress, and they will only do it if they get a couple hundred million phone calls saying, look, guys, we elected you to do a job, do your job. The problem is Congress is scared stiff of the IRS because they're going to get audited. Yeah. Congress can pass a real stiff, just Congress in five minutes can pass a simple law that says no congressman or senator in this, at the federal level is required to keep records or file income tax forms. Right. Ah, there you go. Now, how can they possibly not uh, be biased in, in this? How can a federal judge possibly not be biased? All federal judges should be exempt from taxes. Exempt them. I mean, I don't know how many federal judges there are, but let's say there's, you know, a thousand of them. Okay. If a thousand judges stopped paying income taxes, it wouldn't touch them, it wouldn't face the budget. Let them off so they can be an honest judge and not be a fraud. Wow, that, that's a very interesting thought. Yeah, that, I've never, I've never, uh, that's very interesting. I, I, you know, makes them totally unbiased if that was to happen. It's, it is, it really is. It's that important to them to win. The idea of losing just doesn't enter their mind. Uh, and I don't think the idea of being honest enters their mind either, okay? Yeah. What, I, there's my letters. You've got them. Please spread them around. Let folks know. I try. Yeah. Well, John Schlaubach uh, was in Spokane, Washington area. I went and preached at his church and stayed at his house after after he wrote this letter. That's how I met him. Yeah. And he said, I got correspondence. He said, yeah, I'm a Christian. I went and spoke at his church on creation. I stayed at his house. And a great Christian guy. Loves the Lord. I would be willing to predict, and I don't know, I haven't heard from him in nearly 20 years. I'd be willing to predict that all three of those that wrote those letters got persecuted, prosecuted, or executed, or something happened to them. Wow. Maybe you can do some... Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, try to, I'll try to look into that as best as I can. We do have the letters now, so we have the names and uh, maybe some of the addresses and phone numbers, so I certainly will put that on the list of things to do. Well, this typical Nazi technique, you silence the opposition. Yeah. This is what they do in, in communist countries. This is what they do in Nazi Germany. And if, if somebody wants to turn America into that kind of society, and there are some who do, that's their Gestapo technique. That's, why did they come arrest me with 20 people? Why would they drag my five-foot-tall wife out of bed in her yeah. nightgown and not let her get dressed? And that, why the Gestapo techniques? Right. If they are doing something honest and lawful, why do you need to do this? Yeah. Now, I can't stop them. They have the guns. <laughs> I'm a preacher of the gospel. I love the Lord, and I, I fear God more than anything. And like all the prophets all through the Bible, I can preach the truth until they shut me up. Yeah. John the Baptist simply preached the truth. Herod, you shouldn't have that woman. Amen. That woman got frantic and cut his head off, okay? Elijah, prophet of God, stood up against the evil prophets of Baal, did a wonderful job.
job and one wicked woman, Jezebel, chased him for <laughs> a long time until Jezebel, until Jezebel got eaten by a pack of dogs. Yeah. You know? I don't understand it, brother. I just want to be left alone. Amen. Anyway, then uh, they took, I was making like $300 a week working at a cabinet shop, you know, back in, uh, whenever that was, 89 or 90. And uh, they, they took up an offering. I, I said, brother, I don't charge anything. I'm not in this for the money. God supplies. They took up an offering for $1,000, that little bitty church of 38 people. Wow. We were just done. My wife and I, wife and I cried. We held the money and said, Lord, if this is what you want. Nice. Go full time. Please provide. And that's been, you know, it's 25 years or whatever it's been, 24 years, and uh, it has been amazing watching God supply. And I think he sent you guys to help pull me out of this pit, you know, like even me, like had to pull Jeremiah out, Jeremiah 38. I'm stuck in a hole, brother. I don't know what I can do from here except tell the truth. Amen, brother. Well, that's, Somebody help. You know? Amen, amen. We're going to continue to look to the Lord. And uh, A brother called me today from our conference call, and he was... Uh, I guess something, you know, it, it was impressed upon him to me to relay this to you, and uh, he's been studying your case and trying to, you know, become, uh, you know, educated about all the situation that has occurred, and one thing that he noticed is that there, there's, there seems to be a lot of women involved, uh, you know, he was mentioning Rebecca Horton, you know, she was probably the one who turned you in and uh, then you have Michelle Heldemeyer was the prosecutor from the first case and then I've just sent you a paper Tiffany Hope Egg Eggers is your new prosecutor and she was also listed as an attorney on the first case and then of course you have Judge Margaret Casey Rogers and he was bringing up uh, you know spiritual warfare and, and things that I'm not you know expertise in uh, but he was saying uh, something about a Jezebel spirit and that, you know, it seems like the spirit of Jezebel has risen up against you and all of these women. And he just wanted me to bring that up and I didn't know if you wanted to comment on it or just, you know, we'll take it with a, you know, we'll take it and you can digest on it later. But it, it does seem there is a lot of women involved in the enemy camp. I don't know what, I don't know what to think about that. I, I will definitely not comment on that. <laughs> okay. All right. Can I just add something quickly? I don't know if you remember this story or not, but about four years ago, or maybe five years ago, we uh, sent my mom your video. I think I already told you this story, and you made a funny blonde joke at the very beginning, and she got so upset she wouldn't watch it. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. It's silly. It's like the silliest thing in the world. I mean, it's like, it's just a, an innocent little blonde joke and it offended her so bad. It's like, what? You know, it's like there's a lot worse things in the world to be offended at other than a silly little blonde joke. And I think I think you were blonde at the time, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my, my daughter's blonde. My sister's blonde. My mother was blonde. Uh, I would ask her to read Psalm 119, verse 165. <laughs> 119, 165. Yeah. Okay, well. Anyway, some people are just a little more sensitive than other people. Let's call it from the Son of Oak County Sheriff's Office. Well, that verse says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Yeah, that's good. Very good. Although, I don't know. I, I feel like there's going to be no peace until Jesus returns. These freaking, oh, these freaking Jezebels, Judge Margaret Casey Rogers, uh, Tiffany Hope Eggers, Michelle Heldemeyer, Rebecca Horton. I hope they all go to jail. Uh, you know, what you did to this man, you're trying, you know, there's going to be consequences. You guys need to repent. You guys need to repent for what you're doing to that man. the poisons for they can see far we will teach them that the poisons are good with fun images 
and musical tones. Those they look up to will help. We will enlist them to push our poisons. They will see our products being used in film and will grow accustomed to them and will never know their true effect. When they give birth, we will inject poisons into the blood of their children and convince them it's for their help. We will start early on when their minds are young. We will target their children with what children love most, sweet things. When their teeth decay, we will fill them with metals that will kill their mind and steal their future. When their ability to learn has been affected, we will create medicine that will make them sicker and cause other diseases for which we will create yet more medicine. We will render them docile and weak before us by our power. They will grow depressed, slow, and obese. And when they come to us for help, we will give them more poison. We will focus their attention toward money and material goods, so they may never connect with their inner self. We will distract them with fornication. On Tuesday, Oregon State Police got a tip that a young woman had created a 17-minute porn video that ended up on Pornhub.com. Yeah, it's a buzz around campus. External pleasures and games, so they may never be one with the oneness of it all. Their minds will belong to us, and they will do as we say. If they refuse, we shall find ways to implement mind-altering technology into their lives. We will use fear as our weapon. We will establish their governments and establish opposites within. We will own both sides. We will always hide our objective, but carry out our plan. They will perform the labor for us, and we shall prosper from their toil. Our families will never mix with theirs. Our blood must be pure always, for it is the way. We will make them kill each other when it suits us. We will keep them separated from the oneness by dogma and religion. We will control all aspects of their lives and tell them what to think and how. We will guide them kindly and gently letting them think they are guiding themselves. We will foment animosity between them and our factions. When a light shall shine among them, we shall extinguish it by ridicule or death, whichever suits us best. But that's called the death panel, uh, and you're not supposed to have that discussion. We will make them rip each other's hearts apart and kill their own children. We will accomplish this by using hate as our ally, anger as our friend. The hate will blind them totally, and never shall they see that from their conflicts we emerge as their rulers. They will be busy killing each other. They will bathe in their own blood and kill their neighbors for as long as we see fit. We will benefit greatly from this, for they will not see us. They cannot see us. We will continue to prosper from their wars and their deaths. We shall repeat this over and over until our ultimate goal is accomplished. We will continue to make them live in fear and anger through images and sounds. We will use all the tools we have to accomplish this. The tools will be provided by their labor. We will make them hate themselves and their neighbors. We will always hide the divine truth from them that we are all one. This they must never know. They must never know that color is an illusion. They must always think that they are not equal. Drop by drop, drop by drop, we will advance our goal. We will take over their land, resources and wealth to exercise total control over them. We will deceive them into accepting laws that will steal the little freedom they will have. We will establish a money system that will imprison them forever, keeping them and their children in debt. When they shall band together, 
We shall accuse them of crimes and present a different story to the world, for we shall own all the media. We will use our media to control the flow of information and their sentiment in our favor. When they shall rise up against us, we will crush them like insects. But they are less than that. They will be helpless to do anything, for they will have no weapons. We will recruit some of their own to carry out our plans. We will promise them eternal life, but eternal life they will never have. They are not of us. The recruits will be called Initiates, and will be indoctrinated to believe false rites of passage to higher realms. Members of these groups will think they are one with us, never knowing the truth. They must never learn the truth, for they will turn against us. For their work, they will be rewarded with earthly things and great titles, but never will they become immortal and join us. Never will they receive the light and travel the stars. They will never reach the higher realms, for the killing of their own kind will prevent passage to the realm of enlightenment. This they will never know. The truth will be hidden in their face. So close, they will not be able to focus on it until it is too late. Oh yes, so grand the illusion of freedom will be that they will never know they are our slaves. When all is in place, the reality we will have created for them will own them. This reality will be their prison. They will live in self-delusion. When our goal is accomplished, a new era of domination will begin. Their minds will be bound by their beliefs. The beliefs we have established from time immemorial. But if they ever find out, they are our equal. We're not turning our guns in, and we're not running, and we're not backing down. If you want them, come and take them. We shall perish then. This they must never know. If they ever find out that together they can vanquish us, they will take action. They must never, ever find out what we have done. For if they do, we shall have no place to run. For it will be easy to see who we are once the veil has fallen. Our actions will have revealed who we are, and they will hunt us down. And no person shall give us shelter. This covenant must never, ever be known to exist. It must never, ever be written or spoken of. For if it is, the consciousness it will spawn will release the fury of the Prime Creator upon us. And we shall be cast to the depths from whence we came and remain there until the end time of infinity itself. The globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding and making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize Realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the info war to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv. Wiley Drake has organised a Boots on the Ground in Pensacola, Florida, between the 5th and the 10th of February. Uh, Dr. Holbein, we're going to be under the Red Roof Inn, under the blood of Jesus, from the 5th through the 10th. And I would encourage anyone to come and to be with us 
to pray with us. We're going to be there from the 5th to the 10th of February. The address is 7340 Plantation Road, Pensacola, Florida, 32504. Come and join us. Be boots on the ground. Here's the address. If you live locally, you might want to be there. The new trial date is Monday the 2nd of March 2015, most likely Courthouse 1, North Palafox Street, Pensacola, Florida, and probably early in the morning. They keep moving the court date to stop people from organising. I know I'd want to be there if I lived locally, but I'm in England and it's a bit difficult for me to, uh, to get there. But I've even considered the idea of uh, taking a flight and being on the ground on the 2nd of March 2015. Don't know if I can do that, but that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so the best place to get good information is 2peter3.com and freekenthoven.com, links below. Um, if you go to a search engine and you type in freekenthoven.com, I've just found this website to be the most responsive, the quickest. It's I've got a slow internet connection and it just works uh, perfectly. It's a cracking website for uh, all the latest information on Kent Hoven. We've got Kent Hoven's blog over here, which um, takes us to fast-moving information. That I logged on last night and then this is first thing in the morning and there's three new stories that have emerged about Kent Hoven just overnight. So it's a fast-moving uh, case. Uh, I've yet to read this one, which um, I'm interested in. I'm interested in reading them them all. So you can click on the uh, the story to read more, uh, and then you've got the option of leaving comments below the uh, below the source if you if you want to leave uh, comments on that. It's a great website to get active, to get updates, and to meet um, like-minded people. So. Uh, We've got the, the blog there. There's other options. And also, we now have the um, the petition with over 20,000 signatures on it. We now have that petition back. And at the time of making this video, there's uh, 21,000 signatures on it. And it's in the process of being uploaded, updated to the website. So if you do click on this to sign the petition, it'll take you to a new temporary petition that had to be set up uh, here it is and it's currently got 683 signatures on it and that's just in the last week so that'll be added to the 21,000 that we have already and uh, this this website will be updated with a full list shortly we're starting to pick up chatter that Infowars has been given an embargo So the courts have bypassed the constitution, making up bogus crimes to have a, an innocent man sentenced to life imprisonment. Yet the biggest defender of the constitution, Alex Jones, doesn't even cover the story? What are we to make of this? Hello everybody, this is Glenn Kennedy. I'd like to talk to you today about Alex Jones and how I can pretty much prove to almost anybody out there that he doesn't have your best interests at heart. 
He's definitely not a Christian by his actions. He has lied, he's censored, he's run from solutions. And I'm going to prove that to anybody that follows all the links in my article that's linked to this video. Now, before we get started into the meat of stuff, I just wanted to show you a clip that I had originally in my other article, but apparently Alex Jones has taken it down, and I'm going to put it in here and, and kind of give commentary before I start the video. Now, I have no idea where this video was taken. It looks like one of the people in there is Joe Rogan. I don't know the other people at all, but you're going to be shocked when you see the kind of people that Jones hangs out with. I mean, one of these guys is literally demonic looking, and he's laughing about killing Christians at Waco, saying how wonderful it was when those Christians are killed. Now, I understand that Alex, you know, he can't control what other people say, but these are people that he just sits there and takes it. In other words, they throw Jesus Christ under the bus, and Alex really doesn't say anything for a long time. And then when he does, he basically says, you mean the, the Christians that change my tires? Now, does that mean that Christians are only good for changing tires? Or is that something to say that Christians are good and do change tires? I'm not sure, but what, what follows after that is they beat up on Christians again, and he doesn't respond at all, and then he just makes a joke about it all. So he never once responds and tells people that God and Jesus Christ are real like a real Christian would. Then the most shocking thing is at the end, when somebody point blank asks him, Alex, why do people believe in God? And he says, because they're afraid of death. Now this is, a de this is something demonic. This is something like a New World Order scumbag would tell you. Because a true Christian knows that the reason that people believe in God is because he's real and they have a personal relationship with God. So I want you to look at this shocking footage. It shows what kind of things go on behind the scenes. He's telling you he's a Christian, but when the time comes and when, when people are throwing Jesus Christ under the bus, I want you to see what Alex Jones does. And I'll be back and we'll continue this video. Just like the cocksuckers who got wasted in Waco, and if that was the government, God fucking bless you. The more Jesus freaks we wait, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> what Jesus freaks is that? I've said Waco. Waco. Yeah, what we're on. Public <laughs> yeah. uh, well, well, didn't they kill like a bunch of little Jesus freak kids? That's yeah, but possible. those fuckers would grow up to be Jesus freak fuckers. Maybe they might have been you mean the Jesus freaks that help me change my tire? Yeah, whatever. I don't give a shit. <laughs> yes, please tell us if, more. If you believe in God, you're a fucking idiot. That's the way it goes. Well, wow, what a sweeping generalization. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You call it me? <laughs> what the fuck? You say me? <laughs> this is why we're going to... I have sweeping generalization. You going to listen to this guy for an hour? <laughs> yeah, that one is yours. Double <laughs> plus <laughs> good. <laughs> Double plus good. Uh, why does anybody believe in God? Because they're, they're afraid of death. But I'll tell you, our closest friends must be those who are pursuing holiness because they will have an enormous effect upon our lives. You need to find out who is the greatest Christian in this room and say, I want to be your friend. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33, do not be deceived. Did you hear that? Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. A little leaven leavens the whole loaf. You tell me who your friends are, and I will tell you exactly who you are or who you're about to become. Run with the righteous. Why does anybody believe in God? Because they're afraid of death. Why does anybody believe in God? Because they're afraid of death.
anybody believe in God? Because they're afraid of death. How old are you? I'm 22. When are you going to die? I have no idea. Well, God knows exactly the moment of your death. And it could be tonight, it could be tomorrow. I'm not using scare tactics, this is just straight reality. 150,000 people every 24 hours die. And they're all making plans for next week, no doubt. So please think about this. Do you have a Bible at home? No. I'm not talking about a religion that says you've got to strive to get to heaven. I'm telling you, the Bible says heaven is a free gift of God. You cannot earn everlasting life. Doesn't matter how religious you are, how good you are. God commended his love toward us and that while we yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then he rose from the dead and defeated death. And this is how the Bible puts it. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, least any man boast. So eternal life is a free gift of God, and it comes because of God's mercy, not because of anything we do. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Do you have a Bible at home? Y yes. I've been reading the Bible every day for more than 40 years. There's no mistakes in it, Mike. Any mistakes that we think are our mistakes. And you can trust God's Word. I mean, think of how you trust professors and science books that tell you you're a, you're a primate. You trust and believe that. So how much more should you trust a God who cannot lie? Let me show you how fallible we are. Spell the word shop. 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 S-H-O-P. What do you do when you come to a green light? Stop. Green light. Oh. <laughs> so we're all fallible. We make mistakes. So imagine if you're making a mistake when you say this whole of creation came together because some explosion of nothing that produced everything, seasons, the birds, the trees, the flowers, the sun, the moon, the stars, and the marvels of the human body. So are you going to think about this? Oh, yeah, no, I, I think about this quite a lot, believe me. My brother, like I said, he's a hardcore Christian. He's going to Yale Divinity School right now, so he talks to me about this all the time. And so you've got to think seriously about this. Life is full of decisions. Soften your heart. Don't have so much blind faith in what science tells you and it's left you without any knowledge of what was in the beginning anyway. You haven't got a clue where you come from. You don't know what you're doing here on Earth and you don't know what happens after you, after you die. Peter, uh, could you be wrong about God's existence? Yes, and could you be wrong about God's existence? No. Well. Then, then I think you're rather close-minded. Well, if I said to you, um, could you be wrong about your wife's existence, you'd say, no, I know her. You'd say, don't be ridiculous, I know her and love her. And I know the Lord, and I love the Lord, and He transformed my life 41 years ago, instantly, overnight, forgave my sins and gave me new desires, when I had no desires or thoughts of God for the whole 22 years before I was a Christian. Mike, thanks for talking to me, I appreciate it. Yeah, of course, no problem, thank you. One more thing, because you're a very intelligent man, spell the word shop. Shop? Like S-H-O-P, S-H-O-P. What do you do when you come to a green light? You stop. Green light. Hmm? Green light. Oh, ahaha. Very good. Here you go. Peter, you've been a good sport. Thank you very much for talking to me. Okay. I generally don't engage creationists because it's not good for my blood pressure. So you're going to think about this? Mm-hmm. I, I, I think about it a lot, actually. Like I, I think about I think about death and how fragile life is, and how just in a second I, it, it could all be over and there'd be nothing. You know, the the problem with those who are unable to see evolution, I think, is they don't have imaginations. Why does anybody believe in God? Because they're afraid of death. Okay, you've just seen how Alex Jones openly mocks God in private. Of course he's going to tell you he believes in Jesus Christ, but as you saw in the clip, when those literal demons from hell were just bashing Christians and saying that they need to kill all the Christians, Alex Jones just sat there and, and didn't speak up for the Lord.
And, and God says in the Bible that those that confess him before men, he will also confess them unto the Father. So, Alex Jones, you better get right with God because you're, you're not a Christian. And, and I, I'm going to prove it not only from that clip, which is very, very shocking to anybody that's a Christian because you've all been, he's always told you that he believes in Jesus Christ and he believes in God. But here he had a perfect opportunity, and all he had to say was, you know, when they asked him, why do people believe in God? You know, I would have said, because he's real, and I have a relationship with him, not because they're afraid of death. That sounds like something a demon from the New World Order would say, because it's not true. Christians don't believe in God because they're afraid of death. They believe because they know he's real. So as shocking as that is, and it should it should wake up 95% of you, for the other ones, I'm going to show you some other things that prove that Alex Jones is not only not a Christian, but he's a liar and he censors. Because, you know, a, a Christian cannot tell a known lie. If, if, if you know something's a lie, as a Christian, you have to repent for that lie immediately if you tell it. You can't just sit there and lie. Because Christians know that all lies come from Satan. In an article titled Free Kent Hovind imprisoned eight plus years now facing new trial for bogus charges with a biased anti-Christian judge presiding, the author makes the case that the average prison sentence for, for tax related offences is 14 months. So even if you think Kent Hovind is guilty, he's served more than seven times the average already. Average being 14 months. He's done eight years. And there's links to official statistics in this uh, article. It's unbelievable. Dr. Kent Hovind answers Bible questions from prison. And we're, we're trying to in include... Oh, so one, one last thing. Uh, if people have Bible questions for Kent, I think it's good for Kent. And it's also good for us to capture, you know, his knowledge. Because we know what's going to happen in the future. So the people that have been in... Bible questions, praise God for you, send in more. We need more. Every time he calls, I'd like to I'd like to post those by him, and I think it's good for him, and it's good for us to hear him. So let's continue that. If anybody has any Bible questions, I, I strongly encourage you to send me those. He's answered one of my questions just a few days ago. So if you do have any Bible-related questions that you'd like to ask uh, Dr. Kent Hovind, then I guess leave them in the comments below and I'll notify Lone Star 1776 or sub to his channel, even better. Uh, subscribe to Lone Star 1776. Uh, links to his channel is uh, in the description below this video. There's only 28 days left. If we make some noise, there's a good chance that they might drop the charges and free Kent Hovind. If we don't make any noise, then an innocent man is going to jail for a hundred years. And then they might go after you as well for the same nonsense made up crimes that they've gone after Kent Hovind for. Thank you for watching this video. Click the screen to watch a previous video that will get you up to speed about Kent Hovind's predicament. I'm Tiger Dan 925 a prophecy addict from the UK. Incidentally, for those of you who don't know, Dan925 stands for Daniel 9 verse 25. It's a phenomenal prophecy from the Old Testament. It's also a prophecy that Kent Hovind and others would be thrown in jail and we need to get him out. FreeKentHovind.com 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 God bless you all, and remember, the answer to 1984 is 33 A.D. Yes, the issue of eternity is a very, very real issue that we have to all think about as Christians, and that's why we evangelize people is so that they can get saved, because one day, like the Bible says, that we're all going to stand before God, we're going to get judged for all the times that we have transgressed His law, and if we are guilty, we'll end up in hell or the lake of fire forever. And if that's a very big reality, if that's really going to happen, then we have to really have a sense of urgency to reach out to the lost, to do it with fervency and passion so that we can pull them from that road that's leading to destruction. And that's one of the main factors that should motivate all of us Christians every day, whether it be with family, friends, or even strangers we meet all around. 
Hey brothers and sisters, it's Jared. This is Hollywood Hell 2. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how today's blockbuster and Hollywood movies are being used to symbolize and prepare the masses for the birthing and rise of the Antichrist. It's why you see movies like Devil's Do. This is a spiritual battle, brothers and sisters, and the world is asleep, being used as pawns at enmity with God paying to see the satanic seed birth, enjoying and worshipping the satanic system. The first film we'll be taking a look at is Dracula. My father was a great man. A hero, so they say. Sometimes the world doesn't need another hero. Sometimes what it needs is a monster. I have been waiting an eternity for a man of your strength to arrive. Welcome to your power to destroy my enemies and save my family. There's no turning back. Drink, Dracula. Happening to you. I'm the thing men fear, not a ghost. I see the devil inside him! The world. Never forget who I am. Now, guys, I want to remind you again that these are just the trailers. You don't have to watch these movies to know that it is not beneficial to, to your spiritual man, to know that it is not of Christ, it is of Antichrist. We look at this trailer, and it starts off dark, saying that sometimes you don't need a hero, sometimes you need a monster, and then he's climbing up the mountain, and he gets to the top, and you'll see it has the two pillars. Now these are the same pillars of Boaz and Jacob from Solomon's temple that the occult use to symbolize the two pillars that come together to form one, the perfect man. This is their perfect man, their Antichrist Messiah that they are symbolizing to us over and over again. You'll see it on Harry Potter covers. They did a stint of it on MTV with Kanye West walking out. It's a worship, it's a glorification of the Antichrist that they're raising up. So in this one we see the two pillars and then we see the four of the 13th pillar, the one in the middle, and you can see that Dracula is the man who's rising up to it. He says, I've been waiting for someone as powerful as you. Then when he gets up there, he has to do a blood sacrifice with the demon, Satan, and then he rises to power. He becomes the strong one. And then just to reaffirm this and make sure that it's completely clear, one of the characters says, I see the devil inside of him. And it shows him in between the two pillars again while he is controlling the forces of darkness. So, I mean, this is just a clear example of how they are just symbolizing through their esoteric symbols, through their satanic imagery. They're showing it to us over and over and over again, putting it in our minds, getting us ready for the system. And what it really is, is they're diverting worship from God. Because people go to these movies and they worship it that's what they're doing. It becomes a form of worship. When you are watching it for your pleasure, when it's the things you think about, you know people who call themselves movie buffs? Well, movies are their god. That's, that's basically what it is. Whatever consumes your mind most is your god. Okay, so the next movie we're going to take a look at is Horns. This is starring Daniel Radcliffe, the star of the Harry Potter movies. And the Harry Potter movies have all sorts of esoteric symbology in them. It has the Illuminati Pyramid, which is the gifts that they're trying to get together. It also has the mark on the forehead, which is the lightning bolt, the symbol of Satan. So see, they were preparing kids for this all along. Just the boy with the mark, he is the special one. He's the one who can defeat the evil. It's the, it's the mark of the beast symbology. That they're slowly getting into people's heads through repetitious imagery over and over and over again. And now, it's no surprise that he's moving on to movies like this, Horns, where he is actually Satan's seed coming to Earth. I'm gonna love you for the rest of my life. Just love me for the rest of mine. How do I look? Did you notice anything unusual? I'm in Horns. Everyone in this town is going crazy. I think it's because of me and these horns. You killed that innocent girl, now the devil has claimed you. 
I didn't kill her father, and now people are telling me all these things I don't want to hear. Commit you killed her. It'd be such a huge scoop for me. I got an idea. How about you guys beat the heck out of each other, and the winner gets an exclusive interview with me? What's that snake doing around your neck? I made a new friend. Are those horns? You can see this trailer too starts off with the symbolism, the occult symbolism. As above, so below. It shows him and the girl above, and then it switches to him below. It shows him on the Masonic checker floor. Also in this trailer, they have a subliminal message for the dark and bright eye symbology that the occult and Illuminati like to use to symbolize the Antichrist. Now your eyes pick up 30 frames per second. After that, it all starts blurring together and your conscious mind doesn't pick it up, but your subconscious mind does. So it shows Daniel Radcliffe for a brief second, rising his head up, and these flames darken his right eye while he's rising up out of it. And you may say, dude, that was just chance that those were right there. It's not supposed to symbolize anything. Well, on his movie posters, they're doing the same thing, covering up the darkened right eye, saying he'll bring out the devil in you with an upside down cross next to it. And you see, anyone who is anything in Hollywood has to do the symbology because this medium is controlled by Satan. And all of these people that you see covering up the dark and right eye, it's to symbolize, it's a mock of the word of God, which says in Zechariah 17, Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. And many believe that this prophet it was speaking prophetically about the Antichrist to come. So the occult use this as a symbol to symbolize their false messiah. So this girl is found dead, or he's assumed to have murdered her apparently, and then while people are questioning him, he begins to grow horns. He begins to become like the devil. And he advertised this movie as, he brings out your demons, embrace your demons, uh, he's going to bring out the devil in you, and that type of thing. And so what happens in this video is people start to associate with the satanic spirit in him, and they begin to act satanic and start telling him all their deep demonic thoughts and things like that. And what I want to show you guys is this is just a promotion of sympathy for the devil. And Hollywood is doing this. They're making Satan look like a good guy or a comical character or someone that's likable or someone that I think Daniel Radcliffe in this probably rescues his girl's name by killing the guy who kills her or something like that. It's all about promoting Satan. Because Daniel Radcliffe is a character in this movie that you're supposed to become attached to, that you're supposed to relate to. And during the movie, he ends up turning into Satan. He ends up turning into a disgusting, wretched creature that has come from the pit itself. When you say, well, this movie's based around that, listen, they're doing the same type thing in How to Train Your Dragon. They have the Baphomet goat jumping around in between the trailer. And you see the main character, he has the demon head on him, the head of Satan. It's to get your kids associating Satan with a good thing, Satan with a hero. And this is how they're doing it, guys, because we are trapped in televisions. We're trapped in movies. Scientists are saying that we're going to be living in virtual reality in 40 years. You can see what is happening. The tides are turning. God did not make us to be creatures that sit down in front of picture frames for hours upon hours upon hours upon hours. I'm not saying that movies can't find a place in your life, but if you are really watching hours of TV and movies a day and you can obviously see from all of the researchers and people who are bringing this before you and the whole discernment of the Holy Spirit that all of this stuff is just not of God. It's just not. It promotes everything that's against the Ten Commandments. It always belittles God, puts down Jesus, mocks our Lord, and then promotes the things of Satan, the worldliness of this world. Do you really think that you're going to be a spiritual giant in this battle that is quickly coming upon us? I mean, the battle's been here, but this storm that's quickly coming upon us. I mean, we can just see the clouds gathering, and to be sitting there just watching them, and watching them build up, and not 
literally getting ready, getting into the Word, studying the words of Jesus. He told us about all of this before it happened. He prophesied about this system. He prophesied about this Antichrist coming. He told us that many would fall away to him in a deception. And guess what? We're showing you the deception right now. It is upon us. They are lying to you through your entertainment. They are lying to you through the idols of this world. They are lying to you through every means that Satan can get to. Listen, God works through one way. It's the truth. It's the Holy Spirit of God. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ that God came as a man, took upon our sins, died on the cross, sanctified us in the sight of God. We are now without blame in the sight of God when we put our faith in the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross. But Satan, he comes with a billion lies. He could lie to you through Buddhism, through Islam, through the New Age, through movies, through video games, through TV. He could lie to you through Monopoly. Man, if you, I mean, he could lie to you through any single way. One truth, a billion lies. Please, I urge you, look into these things. Seek the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything he said was true. Everything. I mean, it is all coming to pass right in front of our eyes. The mark of the beast through the RFID chip and all the promotion that they are doing right now. All the wars and the rumors of wars with ISIS, and Syria, China, and Russia. All of the wicked men acting worse and worse because of the love of many is growing cold. Guys, it is time. We are privileged people. Stand strong in the Lord. Stay in the Word. Stay in prayer. Be vigilant. I'll tell you what's the worst part about television is the, is the programming. Yeah. The philosophy. Okay? I mean, the, the manipulating of your mind. The philosophy. The, 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 the mentality. The, the system of thinking, the ideology, that's what's wrong with television. That's what's wrong with movies. That's where they're really getting in your head. Take, for example, Walt Disney, right? And many people that will preach against the TV, they'll preach against the movies, they'll preach against Hollywood because it's obvious that that stuff is bad. But then they'll say, well, well, we watch Disney movies. And I've been to the home of preachers and Christians who would never watch TV or the movies, but yet... They have the whole library of the Walt Disney movies. You know those white plastic cases? And they have them all lined up. And I mean, they have tons of them lined up. Of course, I don't know how many there are, but there's hundreds of them. They have them lined up and, and lined up. And they have their kids watching those movies all day long. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to prove to you right now that those movies are wicked. You say, what? Disney movies? Come on. You're crazy. They're rated G. Well, let's see. First of all, did you know this? Did you know that Disney movies are filled with subliminal messages? Subliminal messages. Now, we're ta what are we talking about tonight? Sorcery. What are we talking about tonight? Uh, getting inside your mind and messing with you. Uh, controlling your thought process by, by uh, supernatural means or demonic means. Or Hey, I'm going to tell you something. Disney movies are filled with subliminal messages. And you say, oh, that's a hoax. I've seen it with my own eyes. When I was a teenager, I had a friend of mine sit me down at his house and show me the subliminal messages in the Disney movies. They're filled with subliminal messages. Let me give you some examples. The Lion King, filled with subliminal messages. Okay, all throughout the movie, there are pornographic pictures hidden in the movie. Like you'll be watching the movie and just for a few seconds, something filthy will come on. Like off to the side, there will be some kind of a, you know, reproductive anatomy will, will pop up, you know, over here. And then, and then over here, there's this one point where the lion, you know, he, he kind of goes like, like this. And a cloud of dust comes up and just spells the word sex. And the word sex is, is put in the Lion King movie subliminally, literally hundreds of times. Hundreds of times. The, 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 the shapes on the screen will spell the word. And I've seen it. I mean, I had my friend sit me down at his house. And pausing the movie, showing me the word S-E-X popping up on the screen at different times because he knew where they were. And he would show me these things. Another one, uh, and they all are filled with it. You know, Aladdin is another one. In the movie Aladdin, uh, there's, a, there's a part in the movie where the guy, the, what's his name, Aladdin? 
There is a point in the movie where he tells Jasmine to take all her clothes off. But you don't even know it unless you know it's there. You listen to it and he mumbles it kind of under his breath. Leave me alone. Calm down. So how's our little bow doing? Come on, good fingers. Take off. So how's our little bow doing? Come on, good fingers. Take off. And I mean, once you know it's there, you hear it just as clear as day. But you didn't know that it was there, you wouldn't hear it. And that the Little Mermaid has a, a filthy picture drawn in the cover on the front of the Little Mermaid. And nobody would realize it until somebody shows you and says, look at this. And you look at it, whoa! And all throughout the movie there are scenes, I'm not even going to describe some of the scenes in The Little Mermaid, where subliminal messages are coming on the screen. Uh, the, the other movie, uh, Beauty and the Beast, there, you know, a nude woman pops up a few times in the background of Beauty and the Beast, filled with subliminal messages. Your kids are watching it and their mind is maybe not even seeing it, but it's going into their subconscious. Words flashing on the screen. Over and over, S-E-X, 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 you know, nudity, uh, uh, filth, there's all the smut is just coming on the screen. Come on, oh, those movies are harmless. They're filled with subliminal messages. Who knows what your kids are being programmed? Oh, but you know what? I'm sure that it's only just the Disney movies. I'll guarantee you it's the rest of Hollywood probably doing the same thing. And these Disney movies, at first when I was a teenager and somebody showed me this, I thought it was just a couple movies, a couple scenes, but you know... As time has gone on, I've realized that virtually every Disney movie is packed with hundreds of subliminal messages to program the, the minds of your children. Okay, but then forget the subliminal message. Just the message of the Disney movies is perverted. Even if you just forget the subliminal message. I mean, for, what, what movies did we bring up? The Little Mermaid. You know, a half animal, half human being. And that's perverted in and of itself. All throughout the Bible, every false god is a half animal, half human being. They're constantly merging of animals and human beings. It's paganism. It's, it's wicked. And yet every Disney movie is pretty much based on the merging of a human being with an animal. It's described in the Bible. And, and uh, the, the movie The Little Mermaid, you know, she's topless the whole time, right? She's just wearing like a bikini top. How is that? Is that how you want your daughter to dress? Is that, oh, but there's no cussing. There's no nudity. Do you want your daughter going around in a bikini top? Is that modest apparel? Is that what Jesus Christ would have you to wear, ladies? No. The movie's filled with Satanism, witchcraft. There's some, what is it, Ursula, some witch that's casting spells and, and using sorcery and demonism. Oh, pretty innocent, right? All of them are filled with it. In, in the movie Beauty and the Beast... Uh, the whole first half of the movie is these, these prostitutes in the town that are dressed just half naked, dancing around, you know, admiring this guy, the big, strong, handsome guy. But all these girls are dressed indecently. They're, 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 they're obscene in their gestures, subliminal messages. And then the whole movie is basically just exalting a certain physical standard of appearance. Beauty and the Beast is a movie about a woman who falls in love with an animal. And in the movie, they keep acting like, well, he's just ugly. He's not ugly, he's an animal. But there's a difference between being ugly and being a beast, being an animal. And if you've seen the, if you've seen the cartoon, it's an animal. It's like a dog. It's like a big dog man. Or I mean, it's clearly an animal, and yet she falls in love with him while he's an animal. You know, only when she kisses an animal does he become a human being. Oh, wow. And you say, well, what's wrong with that? Uh, read the Bible sometime. Hey guys, it's Jared. I pray this video has shed light on the satanic, luciferian, illuminati indoctrination of our children through subliminal messages in Disney movies. I understand that you may not believe this, but when you look into who is making these movies and you see the fruits of their labor, it all makes sense. Walt Disney was a Freemason obsessed with the occult and used his movies and his theme parks as a tool to indoctrinate the public into his beliefs. 
Club 33 in the Disneyland parks is symbolic of the 33rd degree of masonry. The symbolism is also put into the Disney movies. In the Dumbo movie, after getting drunk, Dumbo and the rat have lucid dreams that contain satanic, luciferian, and illuminati symbolism. Disney also displays its corrupt satanic agenda through programming of their idols. They introduce innocent stars that slip under parents' radar and build up a fan base. As the idols get older, they corrupt them and send them on a crash course in a dragnet plot to drag some of their fans down with them. Examples of this are Miley Cyrus, Britney Spears, and Christina Aguilera. I know the 666 in the Disney name is hard for some people to accept, but it's not Walt Disney's signature, as many believe. It is a made logo, and even as a kid I remember thinking the logo looked odd. It didn't look like any D I had ever seen, the Y doesn't even look like a Y, and the squiggly above the I are all part of the hidden mark of the beast symbolism. Think about it. This mark is on everything Disney, and as if to affirm its importance and the Mark of the Beast promotion, on many Disney stores, Mickey's head is made with the same 666. If you still think it's a stretch, then you're probably comfortable with the hand scanning technology they are implementing for VIPs to enter their park and access their rooms. It is a forerunner for the RFID Mark of the Beast technology. They are getting the people ready. All these plots are satanic in nature. If you understand the Masons, Illuminati, and the times that we're living in, it should all be obvious to you. Jesus Christ came to save us from this system. In 1 John 2.15, he said, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Jesus knew this system that Satan was going to be creating. He knew about Disney before it was even here. Satan doesn't play fair. He doesn't wait until you get older before he starts trying to plant his lies in you. He wants to get kids as young as possible and indoctrinate them into his system. Jesus also said, What is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to God. The reason why these Disney movies are so prevalent, the reason why people young, old, big, and small of this world are watching them, is because it is highly esteemed among men, and it is an abomination to God. Our Lord wasn't saying these things to keep things from us or to make life less fun. He was saying these things to protect us. He knew Satan's deceptiveness and his plot to destroy us. As we put our faith in Jesus Christ and his work of salvation for us from this system, and we live in the Word of God and in the Holy Spirit, we will overcome Satan's snares. As we get closer and closer to the end times, the devices of the enemy are going to get more and more devious. I have videos on my channel explaining some of these deceptions that Satan has laid before us, and I am making a playlist called Defeating the Antichrist. Brothers and sisters, this is our time to unite. Let us flee from the unclean thing, and let us put our eyes on the glory of Christ.